I'm opening it in the car. <laughs> yeah! Hi, it's John here again with Tour Radar, and I'm super excited to showcase this second vlog from Iceland with Arctic Adventures to you guys. The first tour encompassed the whole of Iceland's ring road, ticking off all the must-see places along the way, whereas this one focused more in depth on the Golden Circle, as well as parts of the south coast and western peninsula, where we first started, Kirkjafell. It's waterfall, there's the background, and there is Church Mountain. Really excited to be here. It's one of the, the most famous picture spots of Iceland. I'm gonna go get some snaps now. Look at it. It's an amazing peak. From one of the most photographed mountains in the world, we then travelled through Snowfalls Jockel National Park to the Vatchella Lava Caves, where we descended 115 feet underground into the darkness to see the lava tube system that formed around 8,000 years ago. So we've just arrived here at Valsnedla, if I pronounce that right, caves. There's the entrance here. We've got hard hats on, got our torches. That's tight. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, so we're in the caves now. Those two villas here. A very fragile formation, so one of the big reasons why we finally closed the caves in 2007 and only have guided tours. So after an epic day of caving, experiencing the wind, snow, sun, rain, all sorts, we finally arrived here in Grondel. I can't. I can't even advise the characters, but I'll give it a go on some easier ones, I promise. Um, but we've arrived here, it's on the very well, one of the western peninsulas that stick out of the western side of Iceland. So as I said in my previous vlogs, if you watch them, I'm all about the views. And this hotel is awesome, but check out this view. So we've got the sea behind me over here, I'll spin it around in a bit. You've got the mountains over here, you've got the sun setting straight ahead. Look how beautiful that looks. So after a pretty adventurous day yesterday caving and driving right over to one of the western peninsulas, we arrived here today in Fossilum. Ground meaning lava and fossil meaning waterfalls is a series of waterfalls located a few hours north of Iceland's Golden Circle. Water pours down the face of the rocks, seemingly out of nowhere, and while it's not one of Iceland's biggest waterfalls, it's certainly worth a visit. So we've made a quick pit stop here at the world's most powerful hot spring, that produces 180 litres of boiling water every second. That's outrageous. It heats most of the uh, houses and stuff around here in this region, it gives them boiling water um, and some geothermal energy and stuff. But look at this, check this out. So after coming back from the Western Fjords to Reykjavik yesterday, we're going the other side now, we're heading towards the Golden Circle uh, today. Now we've arrived here, which is a very, very cool place. This is the Eurasian tectonic plate, and the other side just over here is the North American tectonic plate. Now it gets a lot narrower through here just behind me, so I'll show you it in a sec. But it is amazing that you can literally stand in between two tectonic plates, uh, which is how, well, mostly how Iceland was formed. Was formed what other side of me here? quite narrow here, um, but they're moving away at a rate of one centimetre every year. Um, and you can actually go diving and sort of getting in between the two rift, uh, the tectonic plates. And the water there is so clear because it's been fed by glacial meltwater that's set, been seeping through the rocks um, over the course of 50 years. And yes, you've guessed it, this is one of the sets for Game of Thrones. The geysers were an awesome spectacle. A combination of bubbling mud pools, small geysers, and one mahoosive one. The biggest and most famous geyser there shoots boiling water 40 to 60 meters into the air every four to seven minutes, and is a very popular spectacle in the heart of Iceland's golden circle.
So I'm standing here by the amazing group of Falls. There's a lot of spray coming off it at the moment. Um, and you might be able to hear it in the background. It's super loud. Uh, but luckily, a while back, it was saved from being turned into a hydro plant um, by the daughter of the owner of the land threatening to jump off the waterfalls. But yeah, there's 100,000 litres of water flows over the falls every second. That is insane. I mean, it would have been good as a hydropower plant. But I think a lot of people are very glad that it stayed natural as it is now. It is amazing. This here is one of Iceland's most famous waterfalls, Sel Gelenfoss. Now I can pronounce that one alright. Uh, what makes this one so special is that you can actually go in and walk behind it. So I'm going to go and walk behind it in a sec. Um, but many years ago, the sea level was actually up to the falls up there where the underhang of the rock hangs up. Um, so this used to fall into the sea, which is all the way over there. Now, the reason this happened is because. Uh, Iceland used to be one huge glacier and it actually weighed the whole land down and after the ice age and all the ice melted the land slowly rose up uh, which then brought the, the uh, water here way above the sea level. How cool is that? So I was going to talk to you guys and I walked right up to the edge of the waterfall, as you can see I'm pretty wet, but it was creating so much wind, um, so much spray, and my camera was getting absolutely soaked that I thought I'd best do it from a safe distance. You can see, you can see all the spray coming off here, and you can feel it, like all the way back over here. Um, but yeah, this is Skogafoss, probably my favourite waterfall in Iceland, and one of the most famous ones it is. But yeah, it's really cool, you can walk right up to the edge of it, as close as you dare anyway, because if you, you know, if you walk about... Well, I walked about 10 metres away from where all the water fell and I just got soaked instantly. So, probably not the best idea, especially right now where it's pretty cold. Um, but it's really cool if you don't mind getting sprayed or you've got waterproofs on. I definitely recommend walking right to the edge of it. You won't even be able to hear yourself think, but it's such, it's such a cool experience. After making it down to the southern coast of Iceland, we had a short pit stop in Iceland's southernmost village, Vik. Here we traded our coach for some pretty mega off-road trucks for the day and drove through a huge lava plain until we reached the ice caves. We are now in Pöflu Jökull. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just about to head in the ice cave up there now. Uh, it's super cool. All this ice is like black and black cool from the basalt which is slowly coming down as the glacier melts over the years. Now if you look behind me, that is everything that's currently melting out of the ice cave right now. The ice cave exploration had to be one of my favourite experiences on the tour. The way the melting ice had carved its way through the crystal clear, marble-like ice, creating crazy formations and winding streams of water running through, was nothing short of spectacular. We're just coming through the ice cave and popped out just here in the centre of the glacier. Now we can walk in where you see the water dripping down there. There's a really, really narrow bit which we're going to go in in a second. From the insanely beautiful natural caves in Vic, we made a quick stop at the lava fields and had enough time spare to visit a rather interesting sculpture. 
So behind me here we have a playground for big kids. Now this this uh, used to be a bridge, but now it's just two uh, iron I-beams, steel I-beams, sorry, crossing over each other. And that's how they are. It's, not, it's now sculpture, but that's when um, the volcano, um, the glaciers behind me, when the volcano uh, erupted and sent thousands and thousands of litres of water across this whole plane here and just destroyed this bridge and left these um, steel beams like this. Uh, and now it's a sculpture with uh, some memorials to to the eruption. When was it? But this is um, the original bridge here. And yeah, just destroyed the bridge. And now, yeah, it's a big adult playground. <laughs> Close to the playground was Joel Colarsen Glacier, Europe's biggest. This accessible outlet glacier ran into a huge lagoon nearby which is connected to the sea. Huge chunks of ice regularly break off into the lagoon and make their way down to the sea and wash up on the beach nearby, nicknamed Diamond Beach, and it's easy to see why. Good morning guys, so after an absolutely epic day, probably one of my favourite days in Iceland of seeing waterfalls, going um, caving inside a glacier, being inside a natural glacier, wow that's absolutely amazing. Uh, we've arrived here today at, sadly, um, one of the only six remaining grass roof churches here in Iceland. Now this was the very last one to be built using this method of the grass roof um, structure. Um, yeah, and it was built in the mid 1800s. Um, now, what makes these churches so special is that they've got no foundations, and that all the internal structure is cantoated off the heavy grass roof, which is super cool. Now, I'll spin it around. It's an absolutely amazing setting. It's very cool, and it's so peaceful and serene around here. Perfect place, perfect setting for it. I've got my crampons, pretty hardcore crampons, got a pickaxe, got a helmet, got my hiking boots on, got a harness. Yeah, we're ready to hike over this glacier. Got the crew walking behind me up towards the glacier there. It's going to be an absolutely epic day. It's been sunny, it's been rainy, it's been snowing. We've seen about five rainbows, so we've got no idea what this weather's going to be like when we're up there, but we're all super, super stoked. Oh, the sun's coming out too. It's currently sunny, it is currently sunny. You need to get grip of ten, all 10 of them. They are sharp, you trust them. They will hold you, the only problem is in your head. In your head, that's the problem because you don't trust them. As soon as you start trust them, it's gonna be awesome. On the way down, even after half an hour, it's gonna be good. But first, it's a weird feeling. Mount Woods are cutting through. You can see the glaciers there. Um, Crabble's doing a good job. And Phillips, uh, there he is. Phillips smashing his way through the glacier at the moment, trying to make some steps for us. Oh, what's he got there? Like a melting kind of element. And say so in a place like this, when you've got still, you know, the glacier, plus the kind of like a black around. So it's gonna be melting much faster. But then the other effect is gonna be, let's say, in here. There's a lot of ash, and then it actually preserves the ice from the uh, from the sun. So it actually melts much, much slower. I just cut a little piece of ice in here for you, and as you can see, very, very clear ice. But because I just smash it, it's, it's uh, full of like a different cracks. And those cracks, because it's so clear ice, make the rainbows inside. Wow. down the glacier now. I mean, this scenery is 
absolutely insane. It's such a cool experience. I was going to shoot more up there, but we had to keep our wits about us. We had to have a hundred percent focus because it is, you know, it is a bit dangerous walking in the glacier. But our guide has been super good, telling us what to look out for, and yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, if you see the mud on my face, this is ash from the 2010 volcanic eruption that happened here in Iceland that put out all the air traffic um, over most of Europe. Um, but yeah, it feels really good on the skin. Probably supposed to be really good for your skin, so cool. I thought we might as well try it. Um, and also drank some glacial melt water, which tasted tasted amazing. I mean, I didn't know didn't know water could taste that good. But yeah, we're heading down here now. A bit of a steep hike, so I'm gonna put my camera away, focus on putting my feet in front of me. Okay, guys, get ready for it. The fermented shark. I'm opening it. At in the car. <laughs> yeah. Outside. No, no, no. Inside. <laughs> oh, that smells strong. Oh, yeah. Woo. That smells. And you got to taste this. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I'll not do that. I did it already. You, want a, you wanted another bite. No, You're good. You're good. I had okay. one. I liked it. It was good. Right. Yeah, of course you will. Nasty. Oh, my God. You need... <laughs> Here, yeah. let me push oh, the button. Can I take? Is this uh, push no. it? Oh, okay. All right. I didn't know if it was going. I was going to. That is the worst texture and the worst taste I've ever had. Oh, my God. I know. I had to chase it with water. And then, and then licorice. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> I'm glad I've done it. So sadly today is the last day of the tour and I'll just say goodbye to everyone in the group. We finished up here in Reykjavik and I'm outside. I'm going to pronounce it because it's the last, my last check-in, Hadlaskodju <laughs> Church here in the centre of Reykjavik. It sticks out, it's one of the highest buildings in Reykjavik. Um, not, they haven't built many skyscrapers which is awesome, it's not like cluttered with loads of high-rise buildings. This church sticks out like a sore thumb, not a very sore thumb, like a very pretty sore thumb in the whole of Reykjavik. It's really cool and it's a musty church. It's super tall, you can go right to the top, so I'm going to check it out in a bit. Um, but yeah, if you want to follow me around my other escapades around the world, luckily this isn't the last time I'm going on, just click subscribe or follow uh, Tour Radar in the link below, and I'll also link the tours that I'm on. I highly recommend you at least checking them out. Iceland is an absolutely amazing place to go see, not just for the landscape, but just for the history and the geology of the place. It's absolutely awesome. For even more inspiration, stay around to watch another video and make sure you subscribe to our channel to follow more of my or my fellow travellers' escapades around the world.